Everyone, this is Andrew Ty. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about speakers that automatically shut off after you haven't been using them for a while. So apparently, this issue is going to plague a lot of common speaker brands. For example, this Creative T20 series, which I recently bought, now contains sleep mode as a feature. So apparently, this is an EU directive. So what happens is that every 10 minutes, if the speakers do not detect a sound, then they switch off. And in order to turn them back on, you need to feed an audio file through it. That means that if you leave your computer for over 10 minutes and you return and you start to play a video, for example, then the first five or six seconds are going to be completely inaudible. It also means that you won't be able to hear any computer notifications. So for example, if you're getting a Skype call or something, then you won't hear it the first five seconds of ringing because the speakers need to wake up from sleep mode. And this is extremely irritating. However, today I'm going to show you how to fix this issue. And the way to do it is to loop a completely silent audio file so that the speakers never turn off. So if you haven't already subscribed, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest tech tutorials. So the way to fix this is to use a piece of software called Soundkeeper. So I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. It's a completely free piece of software. And what it's going to do is it's going to prevent speakers like the T20 from sleeping by playing a loopable inaudible file. So what I'm going to do is to show you how to make use of this. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for this website. And what you need to do is download soundkeeper.7z. If you don't have a file that can open up .7z files, you're going to need to download something called 7zip in order to open it up. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. It's also a free piece of open source software. Just click download here and then install that first. And then once that's installed, we can make use of Soundkeeper. So once we open up Soundkeeper using 7-zip, once that's installed, we have these two files here. So I'm going to use Soundkeeper 64 and then extract it to the desktop. If you look at the README, the way that this works is that we can go down and we can create a certain type of file here. The way to use it is to basically rename the file and add these parameters on in order to create a certain frequency of sound with a certain degree of amplitude, which is basically volume. So I've been experimenting with this for quite a while, especially with the T20s. Every set of speakers is going to be slightly different. The example renaming isn't quite going to work for the T20s. However, if you do rename it, you can rename it F50 A20. So that basically gives a that basically gives a 50 hertz sine wave with 20% amplitude. And that is basically inaudible. So the way to do this is to basically take your soundkeeper.exe and then we rename it, delete the 64, add in the word sine, and then F50 a20.exe. And if I double click that, that's going to generate a certain sine wave. So you can't see it here, but I'm actually recording this using OBS and I can see that there's desktop audio being played here. So you, if I turn this on in the recording, you probably won't be able to hear it, but I do know that it's working. So if I right click on the task manager, then I scroll down on background processes, you'll see that Soundkeeper is here. If you watch this desktop audio section here, if I kill this task, then that desktop audio goes down as well. So basically what you want to do is to keep this running every time you switch on your computer. So what I would do is add this to your startup. What we're going to do is to hold down the Windows key and R and then type in shell colon startup. Basically, we can copy this application into this folder and it's basically going to start up every time you start the computer. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.